Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in video games. And we're kicking this year off with a big one. 2020 was a pretty crummy year for most. Thankfully though, it ended off on a high note for many Sonic fans. For those that didn't hear, the Cutting Room Floor as well as Hidden Palace presented a newly shared prototype of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Why was this such a big deal? Well, although some prototypes of the game have been known to exist, until this day, none have been properly dissected, let alone made public. So naturally, when it was being live-streamed, many fans, myself included, were losing their minds. Anyways, in this video, we'll be diving into this prototype and talking about what I think are the most notable changes from the final, as well as all the interesting finds. Really quick though, before we dive in, in case you missed my announcement earlier this week, I recently got partnered with Geek. Okay. Now this video isn't sponsored or anything, but the reason I bring this up is that they have an awesome Sonic flavor that uh, I think you'll enjoy. So if you'd like to try it out or any of the other awesome G Fuel flavors out there, be sure to use the link at the top of the description or use code Tetra at checkout for up to 30% off your order. Anyways, enough talk, we got lots to go through here. So let's take it back to a time before the game that started it all and find some lost bits. So like I mentioned earlier, there are several known different pre-release builds of Sonic 1 out there. And although it appears that this build lacks specific info like a build date, just based on things seen in this prototype, it's believed to be a later build placed somewhere between the demo scene at CES of 1991 and the build scene in Game Player's Sega Genesis Strategy Guide magazine. And if you're wondering, apparently this build we're discussing here originates from an unnamed magazine from the United Kingdom. Anyways, let's get to the changes. Before we get to the gameplay, just after booting up the game, already a few changes can be seen here when compared to the final release. Here a much smaller, shinier, and more silent SEGA logo starts off the game. So unfortunately no SEGA to be heard here fellas. There's no Sonic Team Presents preceding the iconic title screen either, and this prototype contains a message to press the start button, one which doesn't appear in the final. And a bit of a fun fact about this one, apparently this text is supposed to actually appear in the final release, but due to an error stemming from the Sonic Team Presents and Press Start Button text using the same memory space, the latter just doesn't get displayed as intended. But enough title screen, now let's get to the gameplay as well as the stages. First, some general changes seen here throughout this prototype. For starters, some differences can be noted with the heads-up display. Here, rings is just seen as a singular ring. It also won't flash red when the ring count is zero. And the timer here loops back to the nine minute mark every minute after reaching it, which also means that this build doesn't have a 10 minute time limit before you lose a life. So you're free to roam around and explore the stages to your heart's content with no time constraint. Furthermore, another weird difference here is that the timer will keep counting up after getting a game over. In the final release, it stops instead. Next up, there are a slew of other gameplay differences in this build. Sonic has no collision above him when damaged, there's no combo points bonus for getting a multi-kill, this game lacks any sort of checkpoints at all, 1-ups are earned at 50 and 100 rings instead of 100 and 200 respectively, making it much easier to stock up on lives. To add to that, you can also take damage and reach 50 and 100 rings as much as you can to keep earning lives within a stage. Whereas in the final release, the game limits you to only two ring-based 1-ups per life per level. This change was very likely made as the developers saw that building up a stockpile of lives was a bit too easy, potentially removing the fear of losing a life. Collision is a bit scuffed at times, some platforms seem to cause Sonic to lose speed for no good reason, spikes hurt Sonic even with the invincibility power-up, the vertical camera movement is quite slow, often too slow to keep up with the blue blur, Sonic's jump here is shorter by a whopping 6 pixels, and there are some more changes which I'll touch on as we go through the stages seen in this prototype. And speaking of stages, let's get to them. First up, of course, is the most iconic and reused Sonic area, Green Hill Zone. Which, despite being the most polished zone seen in this build, it still has several differences compared to the final release. Stuff like the Sunflower still having magenta centers instead of green, some enemies were removed, like this motobug at the start here, which was likely removed so that players wouldn't lose a life mere seconds after starting. Several palm trees here lack things like item monitors or springs, which were later added. And yeah, just in general, there are some layout changes in the individual acts. 
Like, there's this wall of spikes along the wall here, near at the start of Act 1, for seemingly no good reason. Like, there's nothing really back there behind them or anything, so what are they really protecting? Come on now, spikes. Thankfully, these were removed. Another notable change is seen here at the highest part of Act 1, where platforms haven't been added in yet. Act 2 had much of the same, some added or removed rings and springs, items in the monitors were changed, and some platforms were added here and there. It's again similar in Act 3, where once more, some monitors were changed, and some more spikes were removed. The boss fight here remains unchanged, but I just thought it notable to mention that at this point in development, this was the only zone to feature a functioning boss battle. Now, all those things are fine and all, but probably the most notable thing here seen in Green Hill Zone, though, are these balls. When looking back at my old Sonic Lost Bits video, I'm surprised I didn't really cover this ball. But before being seen in this prototype, although it's found left over unused in the final release, it's unable to be placed in, rendering it useless. So this ball's intended placement and use were only seen in some old grainy screenshots from other pre-release builds. That changes here, as the ball appears in each act of Green Hill Zone. It works kinda as you'd expect it to, only a bit more buggy. Sonic can push them around, as well as be pushed by them. It also seems to just leave the area when reaching certain spots, like this bridge here. It's not entirely clear what their purpose was meant to be, I mean, besides just being an obstacle. Like, man, some of them are in some really inconvenient places. It's no surprise they were removed. Since Sonic can actually roll these balls through the S-Tunnels, it's possible they might have served some larger purpose, but that's still currently, unfortunately, unknown. And another thing before we move on are some differences seen when completing an act. First off, Sonic can't run off-screen after completing an act, which is fine, I guess. But one of the most interesting changes in this build, at least I think, is that here Sonic can perform a unique victory jump on this screen. Now, I mentioned these sprites in my original Sonic Lost Bits video, since they went on to remain unused in the final release, so it's really cool to see them in action here. And honestly, jumpy boy Sonic is pretty cool, I wish they had kept this. Furthermore, for the end of the act area, the hidden point markers aren't yet present in this build, and the special stage rings aren't fully implemented. Instead here, if Sonic runs through one of these rings, he will become sparkly and then warp off-screen in a way reminiscent to that seen later in Sonic CD. Now, I've seen some fans speculate that this might have been a remnant from a time travel mechanic similar to CDs that could have been intended at some point, but I think it's far more likely that this just might have been a scrapped transition between the act and the special stage, especially given how close to release this prototype was. A big mechanic like time travel seems like not a trivial thing to scrap this far into development. Now on to Marble Zone. Oh my god, it's the UFOs! UFOs, you might be wondering. Well, no one knows for sure what they are, resulting in the unidentified part of the acronym, but again, up until this prototype dropped, these were only seen in some early screenshots of the game, and they became somewhat of a well-known change since their removal is so obvious. As such, many fans were really happy to see them in a working build. They don't do anything besides act cool in the background, but hey, the truth really was out there. Other than that though, we got more of what you'd expect in terms of changes such as different layouts and enemy and ring placements. Once again, Act 1 in Marble Zone has a bad nick right at the start which can bop Sonic if you don't move in time. Anyways, in the interest of time, for the rest of this video I'll stop mentioning all the ring and enemy placement changes as I'll just highlight more major changes on the full level layouts. One more notable change in Act 1 is the different scene in this here hallway. Instead of the vertical spike thing falling, a horizontal one is seen in this prototype instead. Now what makes this quite interesting is that this horizontal spike thing actually goes completely unused in the final, outside of being accessible via the debug mode. So just like the ball, it's really cool to see another object that's never been seen in a used state. Moving on to Act 2, as seen here, the layout was quite different in the latter half of the act. Additionally, another rather big change here deals with these glass platform things. Instead of just hitting a switch to move them, Sonic has to jump on them several times in order to very slowly lower them. This is kind of similar to that one mechanic with the barrels seen in Carnival Night Zone in Sonic 3. I'm very glad the change was made here. In Act 2, you can also damage boost through the lava here to glitch out of the stage for no reason at all, so that's fun. 
Then Act 3 has more of the same in terms of changes, and once again, more major layout changes can be seen here towards the end of the act. And like I mentioned, Green Hill Zone was the only one here with a working boss fight, so instead at the end of this zone we are just greeted with a signpost, and with that ends this last fully complete zone in this prototype. Next up, Springyard Zone! Yep, here not only do we get to see the early name for Springyard Zone, but also a completely different backdrop graphic. Gone are the mountains, distant city skyline, and trees, and instead this zone appears to have been intended to be found smack dab right in the middle of a city, as we can easily see billboards or signs in the background. These include many wishing you good luck, telling you to go go, and ones that I sure can't read. Starting with Act 1, the layout is generally pretty similar, with a few changes here and there. Keeping with the prototype being more difficult theme we've been seeing so far, this build has this bumper surrounded by four lines of spike balls. Definitely an obstacle, that's for sure. Alright, now on to Act 2. Or not? Guess we're skipping Labyrinth Zone 2 and going right to Starlight Zone. Okay, I suppose? Right off the bat here, it becomes apparent that this stage isn't exactly something you'd call finished, as it turns out this is actually the last normally playable act in the game, as after you touch the end sign post, which is misplaced, might I add, the game will take you back to the title screen. Fear not though, there is a way to access the rest of the stages, which we'll come back to later. Anyway, Starlight Zone here has a bit of a different style, as the platforms aren't just rigid blocks, but rather many more trusses are present. So just like the prototype itself, the stage used to have a more under-construction aesthetic. The layout also has several changes which can be seen throughout the act. Honestly, apart from a few key areas like the loops, this stage is quite different. And there are also several areas that don't really have an obvious way of being reached at this point. So like I said, normally, I guess for whoever this build was made for, this would have been the end of their demo experience. But thankfully this prototype has a not-so-hidden level select that can be simply brought up by pressing A and Start on the title screen. And here we can access the rest of the stages in this prototype, which are left out for good reason, as they aren't nearly as finished as the rest. So let's first quickly finish up with the zones we already started on. For the rest of Sparkling Zone, it's more or less the same as what we saw with Act 1. Leo changes like starting on a slope rather than a flat platform at the start of Act 2, as well as some removed half-pipe things. By the time we get to Act 3, although the level's layout is more or less complete, at this point in development there are no objects in the stage, like the bumpers or, you know, the floating platforms that are necessary to complete the stage. Yeah, without them, this act is normally impossible to complete, but it's not like there's a signpost at the end anyways, so not that big of a deal. Before moving on, I think it's also of note that there's this weird thing in this prototype here where Sonic will, like, stick to the top of some ceilings here when jumping into them. I don't believe this is a thing in the final game. Anyways, now on to the rest of Starlight Zone, and just like with Sparkling Zone Act 3, these two are almost completely object-free. Several changes were also made, of course. Here in Act 2, this wavy segment didn't exist, there was one less loop here, and yeah, I'm starting to see way more changes than similarities. And the same goes for Act 3, where some ideas, like the steep intro slope, was kept, but basically the rest of the stage got a complete overhaul. Not much was kept the same. And this overhaul was certainly for the better, as at this stage in development, this act is really tough to get through. Next up, since it was skipped earlier, is probably my least enjoyed zone in this game, Labyrinth Zone. Just never really enjoyed most water levels in video games, you know? Which is why I was very pleased to see that at this point in development, water wasn't yet implemented. Yay! And just like the other normally unplayable stages, this entire zone is once again pretty barren. Additionally, you might have already noticed that the background in this zone is also different, as instead of the bricks and such, here we see a bunch of rocks, as well as some cracks where sunlight can be seen peeping through, really hammering in the fact that this zone is in some sort of cave. The weird thing is, although the background looks fine in Act 1, in Act 2 it's only half present, and finally in Act 3 it's completely gone. Pretty strange. Other changes include different designs for the crystals seen in the zone, which here look more simplistic, as well as these brick wall tiles, which were removed in the final release, for whatever reason. 
The layouts, of course, also saw some changes, but not nearly as many as some of the other zones, as for the most part, the general layouts appear pretty similar. That said, without the water being implemented yet, these stages are pretty much impossible to normally complete. Thankfully though, the debug mode seen in pretty much every main series Genesis Sonic game is also present here, so with it I can zip through and around walls to my heart's content to explore some otherwise inaccessible areas here. Also, just like with the debug mode in other Sonic games, with it in this prototype we can also place in various objects including items and enemies. Like here, we can place in rings which appear black due to a glitched color palette or a crab meat badnik. What? What do you mean you can't tell that's a crab meat? And yeah, before we move on, the debug mode here didn't really reveal anything else notable that we haven't already seen in this prototype or in the final game. Just the ability to zip around, have invincibility, and to place in objects, stuff we've seen countless times here on the show. Now back to the level select, the last main zone left is Clockwork Zone, or Clock Orc Zone, I guess? Seems like someone forgot to add the W here. Turns out actually there's no W here because there is no W sprite present amongst the title card graphics due to storage limitations. Anyways, Clock Work Zone is an early name for what became Scrap Brain Zone, and this is probably the least finished zone in this prototype. Not entirely surprising considering it's the last regular zone in the final game. Much like the other zones, right away it's obvious that the background graphic is different. Instead of the smoggy industrial background, here it appears that the backdrop just uses tiles from the stage itself, often making depth perception an extra challenge. And in Act 2, the backdrop is just a nice blue screen of depth blue. Awesome. Like I said, this zone is very incomplete. No items or enemies, the fast travel tube things don't work, in fact the paths are often really scuffed. There are several dead ends, the gears and conveyor belts don't quite work as intended, and yeah, overall the stage just looks as polished as sandpaper. As such, it's unsurprising that both acts were almost completely revamped in the final game, with very few layout ideas remaining. Both acts? Well, what about Scrap Brain Zone Act 3, you might be wondering? Well, it just doesn't exist in this prototype, at least not in any playable form. You can't even access it while on the level select screen. Act 3 here just isn't accessible. And if you haven't noticed on the level select screen, there's also no final zone present in this build yet either, so that's about it for the zones. But of course, there's also the special stage to check out. There's only one special stage found in this build, and it's pretty simple in terms of layout, with very few rings and bumpers. There's also no Chaos Emeralds to collect yet, and instead there's just this green block surrounded by rings, which I guess is supposed to be a placeholder for the emerald. It unfortunately can't be obtained or anything though. Also, there's no real end to the special stage either, even if you manage to reach the goal tiles. The stage will spin around, but then it will just stop for a while, and then the stage will reset. Not much else you can really do here at this stage in development, but I guess they were just showing this off as a sort of proof of concept. And although that's it for the levels, we're not quite done just yet, as this prototype also contains several things which go normally unused here. First, let's start off with some unused audio, which can be heard in the sound test in the level select screen. Now to clarify, these might not necessarily be unused in the final release, but they do go unused in this prototype. First, the sound effects. These range from buzzers, to vibrating sounds, to footsteps. In the interest of time, I'll just zip on through the sound effects here. Then as far as music goes, there aren't any unique unused tracks in the prototype, but a few sound a bit different compared to the final and also go unused here. The final zone and continue screen tracks don't go used here since both weren't implemented yet, and the ending theme is slightly slower compared to the final. Here's a quick comparison.
Next, although currently just speculation, there's also an unused level color palette that's believed to have been meant for Green Hill Zone, and this is what the stage looks like with it. Some believe that this might have been for some sort of once planned night mode version of the stage, but again, it's currently just being speculated. Now last up for this video, let's go over some unused graphics and objects. As far as unused sprites go, we got some sparkles, some fireball things, this sprite speculated to have been meant for the sparkling zone boss fight, these water splashes meant for labyrinth zone, some puffs of smoke, these magnet and skull graphics meant for the special stage which are believed to have given Sonic the ability to attract rings and die in the mode respectively, and lastly there's an unused sixth sprite for the animation of the UFOs seen in Marble Zone which makes the rotation of the outer ring seem more complete. Now this can actually be restored into the game with the use of a cheat code, but why this one frame doesn't go used here isn't clear. Then for unused objects, first there's this, whatever this is, that cycles between two garbled sprites. This unknown object can actually be briefly seen in footage of early development of the game on a developer's screen. Then we also have this object that acts as a door that can be opened by stepping on a switch, this thing that's believed to have been a switch meant for Marble Zone, another unknown unused object meant for Labyrinth Zone, as well as this seesaw object that's placeable in Starlight Zone via debug mode. Now these do go used in the final version, but here in this prototype, even when placed in, they lack the spike balls that are used to throw Sonic upwards. And even more mysterious is that here these seesaws also have an unused function that allows them to disappear. This prototype also contains several badniks that weren't implemented in any of the stages seen. We got the Burrow Bots in a different color palette, the Jaws Badniks, Splats the famous scrapped badnik who also went on to be an unused enemy in the final version can be placed in Marble Zone again in a different palette. Oh yeah, and they also don't seem to have collision with moving platforms, and yeah, that's kind of weird. And finally, and probably most interestingly, is the Ball Hog Badnik, who here is seen functioning differently. Now in the final cut, the Ball Hogs face sideways and will launch a bouncing bomb towards the player. In this prototype, however, the Ball Hogs function is instead to waddle side to side and shoot bombs directly downwards towards the player from a higher platform. This function has been a topic of speculation for a while, since this version of the Ball Hog could be seen in some pre-release gameplay footage. So once again, it's really cool to see this in action here. It's really awesome to finally have basically the holy grail of Sonic prototypes publicly available. Sure, it would have been more cool to see a build from an even earlier point in development, but I'm certainly not complaining. This truly is an amazing find, and it's awesome to have this for preservation. And like I've been saying throughout the video, although we've seen a lot of these early changes in old screenshots, it's really cool to finally see them in action. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below to help boost it in YouTube's algorithm. But as always, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.